important for 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 us as Mexicans, but I think they they can speak to it to a general public, to an international public. And why do I say that? I think it's um, as any country, we have many things that have happened through 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 the years that have been created what Mexico is today. And for example, when you see different um, parts of the of the movie. Like for example, the, the, the story of the uh, the Chinese who were um, you know like uh, that you can tell how strong the racism and the, the the lack of tolerance for people that was coming from a different culture was in, in that moment. It's like you might think, oh, this is such a long time ago, you know, and in a, in a country like Mexico where there were practically no contact with Asians in that in that when in that way. Although I have to say that when the Spaniards start their um, to st to settle in all the colonies in the Americas, uh, and Mexico became the new Spain, they trade with the they trade with Asia, and then from the Philippines they will bring all the merchandise and different products as food and 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 all, you know like the silk and other things that will come with the uh, Chinese galleon to Mexico arrive to the port of Acapulco and then by land transport them to the Gulf of Mexico to take them to Europe because of all the pirates that were in the south of Africa and in other areas of Asia. It was easier, easier for the Spaniards to bring them from the Philippines to Mexico and then from Mexico to Europe. So I'm not saying that we were isolated in that sense, but we were not very familiar with other cultures like, like the uh, that were coming that from other people that were coming from other cultures in Asia. But what I wanted to say also about this story is like how we see this happening like in the 40s or maybe in the 30s in last century. And then I think what it's important is that we think what are we today and how are we acting today as society about these kind of things. You know and in Mexico, it has been um, for many years a long process to overcome all the uh, different racism um, about you know our indigenous people, and um, and today we are in a better place. But I think evolving as a society is a very tough work if we are not you know capable or we are not in the will to do it. So that's something that, that I think it's very uh, relevant in this film, just to see how all these things that look very old, because this is like the beginning of last century, but then we see things that happen today in the world, and they are not that far away. And, um, and uh, I think also it's a very interesting movie in the sense that it shows the story of this building, you know, that for 100 years transforms into this like, um, mansion where a wealthy family lived and then it went to it went through all these different episodes or all these different moments of history and then you can see how the, the, the mansion practically transforms from this um, wealthy uh, house to you know like this uh, place where um, children living in, in the, on the streets were, were just trying to, to live in and and this is another thing that is very relevant, is Mexico City, after the earthquake in 1985, all these um, neighborhoods close to downtown, um, this neighborhood, for example, is Colonia Juarez, and this neighborhood close to, to downtown was one of the neighborhoods people tried to avoid right away after the earthquake. So that made that those areas were very depressed economically and that most of the houses were abandoned because they were destroyed or semi destroyed semi-destroyed. So, um, so it's interesting how the directors, that part the filmmakers that participate in this film, how they try to show in one story, how they put together in one story, the story of this building, all these different stories. And um, I don't know if you have I was actually going to ask you, as, my ticket, as yet another foreigner going to Mexico, what was some of you, how much of this did you know, and what kind of preparation did you do before you actually got on set? Um, well, it's true, I was surprised they didn't ask a French actress to come in, and then they told me about how the French influence was kind of strong at this moment. Of course, when I, 
when my story starts, I'm coming from France, and in France, uh, it's just after the Second World War. So uh, I think it's uh, just the getting out of the war and uh, going back to the country. And suddenly, all the social codes have changed, and all the powers have changed. So the story was really about this uh, bourgeois woman, this, this woman from the high society. Suddenly, there is no high or low society anymore, we don't exactly know, but there are some people that became rich, like this, uh, 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 this, this character that she's, she's suddenly attracted to, or maybe she feels attracted to. Is it a dream? Is it not a dream? Here we can see also this, uh, because we had the script, the idea that this woman was now going to have an affair or like a, with this with this man who was her servant, yeah, or was her. and now he's buying he's buying the house, <laughs> and so uh, you can see the social values have to have changed, right? But uh, the the director said, well, why don't we just make this a dream? Why we maybe just uh, maybe it's a fantasy? Maybe nothing has happened. Maybe this is something that she wishes for. And I think that was a very good take on it, because it's a good take on history. History is full of wishful thinking, of fantasy, and we don't know always what's real or not. And, uh, well, that's it. Well, you know, it's interesting because there's a term that I think was first penned in, in Mexican films, magical realism. Yes. And this is kind of that, that very concept. Um, what was your greatest memory of working on this and being in Mexico? You talked earlier before the, the yes, film yeah. about the yeah. film industry. There. Yes. What was your actually being on set and working on the film? Well, you see, uh, I was very moved by their energy. I thought they had a great. Uh, it was the studios. We were shot in studios, and these studios had been uh, abandoned for quite a while because uh, cinema, Mexican cinema, had been a little bit uh, forgotten, and now it was taking a new energy. And uh, every day on set, a lot of directors would come in and say, hey, hi, I just come to visit. I thought, oh, that's really nice. It's really a, a friendly set where people come in with their families. Hi, you know, and, and it's this great director who just directed this or that. And my, uh, my, my partner, Roberto, that, uh, Dagoberto Gama, he's a wonderful actor. I think I was immediately very impressed by him. And I thought, wow, this is a real, uh, uh, honor to be performing with him. One of the difficulties was to learn Spanish. Even though I could have a French accent, I don't speak Spanish, and I had to learn all these lines and make it like it was natural, and that took me quite a while. Did you do that phonetically? Or did you actually translate it in your head? Yeah, of course, you translate it, you try to use the word in different contexts, you try to make it your own. I had a, um, a person to help me, and I worked hard, hard, hard. I was just coming from Japan, actually. I had just done a play in Japan, and it was really fun to come from Japan to Mexico. It was like, whoo, the extreme. <laughs> and uh, it's, uh, it was, uh, no, it was, at the beginning, I, I thought, oh, this is Mexico. I, at the beginning, I thought, is it really friendly? It was full of traffic. Does it have big pollution? It's Mexico City. Mexico City, right. you know. Uh, and, uh, it's, uh, it was big tension, and then when you get to, to stay in Mexico, you see how warm the people are, how full of energy, how, and that makes the city wonderful and full, and I really loved it. I was, uh, I really loved the people there, and uh, I felt really uh, good about, you know, we rehearsed three days for this film in studio, and then we shot for four or five days, so that was not that long, but it was very intense time. And today, Eder Campos, who was the producer with Luis, was supposed to come, but they are shooting another film in the Mexican desert. And they just sent me a picture saying, we are there. <laughs> it's so nice because they, they are really cinema lovers, you know. It was a, a beautifully uh, take, uh, you know, uh, um, organized production. Great. Gaston, well, do you have any idea about this film in Mexico? Has it been released? Is it going to be released? Or do you know anything about the film itself? I know. Do you? Yes. Okay. Yes, because I, I spoke to Edda and I said, oh, well, since you're not going to come, you have to tell me how to fill me in with all the information. So it's going to go to LA, uh, South American Film Festival, 
and then to San Francisco, and then to Chicago at the festival. Uh, I think they have uh, five festivals in the United States, um, Latino, uh, South America. Is this the, the, the United States this premiere? Is, yes, this is the premiere. Wow. Oh, excuse me, this is Richmond. Right. Okay. Yeah, this is the premiere. And so uh, they were very happy that there is going to be a show here tonight, of course. But uh, so they're going to have um, other big festivals and their confidence that their film will probably uh, be released. Uh, so we hope that people will be able to see it that didn't see it tonight. Yes, well, of course. Yeah. Well, let me switch gears a little bit and ask you a little bit about, because hopefully, and I did well, make it. Gary, actually, oh, yeah? we've got limited time. Why don't we take a couple questions from the audience? Oh, okay, yeah. well, let me just, before I forget, speaking of music, I said that before we came in, but if you go to the Hawks, to whom Irene and her brother, yes. Francis, Francis, Francis. Yeah, Francis, Francis, Francis perform, tonight. just tell them you're at the movie and you will be getting in free. And if you don't know where the Hoffheimer is, it's on Broad Street, right up Boulevard, where the Peter Chang is now, it's in that same building. So oh, yeah, please yeah. go there. And Heather has rumor said she's amazing and fantastic, so do make the effort. Do we have questions for the audience? We'll take a couple of minutes. Just uh, it's, it was supposed she to be leaves. at the, uh, at the, uh, yeah, at the... When she gets there, yeah, so we need just I'm going to start before there. she leaves here. Yes, that's yes, right. right. They actually have a warm-up band already working, and so they're yeah. going to just keep banding until she gets there. Jerry, you have a young lady okay. right in front. Hey, how are you? Hi. My name is Cinema. I'm from Mexico City. Um, and then we see you, Cinema. I came here to Richmond because I am from Mexico City. Like, all my life, I lived there. And I knew that there was not going to be a future for me. So hearing you speaking about this is a shock for me. Like, what? Stay like, close. Your mic's breaking up. Oh, sorry. Keep your mic close. I, I, I'm sorry. Speak up. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I was so shocked to hear that like there's actually young directors working on this thing. Um, and um, you were shocked to hear yeah. that there are so young many directors. Uh -huh, ah, in Mexico. Oh yeah. yeah. Amazing. In Mexico. Yes. Um, you know, so, what, do you have a question? No, 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 I'm just, I'm just making a comment. And I want to, I just want to comment a bit because if you are not familiar with Mexico, just keep in mind that this is Mexico City exclusively. Don't ever think that the rest of Mexico is like this. And I just wanted to say that I am so <laughs> excited to see this movie. I have, I have more things to say, but whatever. I just, Right. It's, okay. a bit, it's a particular film because you have eight directors and eight kind of stories. So of course you may enjoy one story more than another or something like that. You may travel in this film about it. But uh, I think I find the collection is really interesting. Right. Any one more question? Yeah, we have a gentleman right back here. Just scream it out. Be yeah. faster. Okay, I can scream it out. Yes. Now I won't scream. Uh, I love the film very much. Oh, it's thank a you. really interesting concept for a film, and your performance was wonderful. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, what I was just saying, I'm interested in this eight director, one film thing, right. and I'm wondering if there was, it was if there was an uber director in a sense no. who sort of said that we have to have these things consistent because it didn't feel like eight directors to me. It, and yes, yeah, and I think this is the talent of the producers because this is really a production film. In a way. So I told you about these two producers that are working together at Chete Film, and they, are, they have trained as directors themselves. And they decided to be producers because they realized that in their film school, no one wanted to be a producer. They all wanted to be directors. And they thought, well, we, may have, we need to have some producers to get these films made. So they started doing it, and then everybody wanted to, them to, to, be, to be their producers because they're so good. And they had this idea okay, let's gather all these directors. One that was kind of famous, like Ernesto Contreras, who did our story, and the others that are younger directors, to create also a good uh, a light for them. And they were the ones to overlook the, right, the writing of all the stories. The directors had to come in and direct, but they, they could change the writing, but you know, it was not their initial idea. And they came also with the casting most of the time. They were the ones to call me and, uh, you know, uh, and to organize. And then they were the ones to choose a great composer, a Polish composer for the music, Jacek, who, uh, who won an Oscar, actually, he was a very talented guy. So they were the ones to overlook these producers of the, uh, of the story. So, 
And they told me, most of the time people don't realize it's eight directors, which they find is a success, right? Which goes to show how important producers are to make it. Right. It's really important, yeah. Right. Well, we do have to wrap up because we have another screening, so I wanted to ask you about the affair, but I guess we'll have to do that later. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, but I look forward to hearing you, to coming, uh, <laughs> I look forward to see you maybe at the Hope uh, yes. Place, if you awesome. want to come uh, and listen to some, uh, to some songs and... Uh, and then there is a, I think a bar and you can oh, yes, hang oh, there yes. a little party bit. time. That's good to have a party time. One quick announcement on the app. They are still working to fix it right now. You can't vote for it. You can for this because this was by itself. But if you vote for your favorite film, there are only by blocks, but they're working to fix that. And when they get that fixed, they're going to send a blast out to everyone on their phone so you can vote then if there's something you've seen besides this that you want to vote for. Thank you for coming. We do need to clear the computer because we have another screen starting. Thank you very much.